the king who looked like a girl. There are many wacky tales told about France in ancient times, but the story about one of her monarchs, King Louis XIV, is one of the weirdest in history. He was the longest ruling king who led France for 72 years, lived extravagantly, did not mind looking like a female to protect his body image, and whose subject went as far as committing suicide wanting to please him. Join us as we explore the life of King Louis XIV, the king who not only is said to have looked like a seven-foot-tall girl, but also stamped the end to one era in the history of the French. As a member of the dynasty of Bourbon, Louis was born on September 5, 1638, in Saint-Germain-en-Laye, France, into the family of King Louis XIII and his mother, a Spanish queen, Anne of Austria. He succeeded his father at the early age of four years and eight months on May 14, 1643. According to the laws of the French kingdom, he was not only the highly revered master at that tender age, but he was also the lord over the bodies and property of over 19 million people who were his subjects. Though Louis was hailed as a visible god, behind the scenes he was a child, neglected and in the care of servants. During these times, he escaped drowning in a pond by the whiskers because there was no one attending to him. His mother, Anne of Austria, who was to blame for this incident, infused in young Louis the long-lasting fear of certain crimes committed against God. Young Louis was just nine years of age when the nobles and the powerful law court of Paris, inspired by the hate of the incumbent prime minister, Jules Cardinal Mazarin, led a revolution against the crown in 1648. This event marked the inception of a civil war known as Fronde, which lasted a very long time. During this war, Louis suffered poverty, fear, cold, humiliation, hunger, and misfortune. However, these tough periods became the heat that forged the near-future character, behavior, and mode of thought of the young king. He had no plans to forgive Paris, the common people, or the noblemen. In 1653, Mazarin gained victory over the rebels, and then moved on to create a formidable leadership structure with Louis as his pupil. In the course of this, the young king picked on Mazarin's passion for arts, display, and also elegance. Though he grew and was proclaimed of age, young Louis never intended to dispute the absolute power of the cardinal. On the flip side, the war that ensued between France and Spain in 1658 was already at its final point. The outcome of this war would transfer Europe's leadership from the Habsburgs to the Bourbons. However, for this to happen seamlessly, a French king had to be a soldier. Thus, Louis did his entire apprenticeship on the battlefield. In 1658, Louis was caught between two far sides, the conflict of love and duty. This was a familiar situation with princes of that period, and it was not surprising that Louis was found in the same web. He had struggled with himself for more than two years due to his love for the relative of the Mazarin, his niece, Marie Mancini. Well, he submitted to the necessary demands of politics and kingdom leadership and got married to Marie Theresa of Austria in 1660, who was the daughter of King Philip IV of Spain. This was done to maintain peace between their two nations. His childhood was at its end, but it was a surprising action to everyone that the king could seize the reins of power. On March 9, 1661, the Prime Minister Mazarin died. This was a huge blow to the kingdom and also to King Louis. Immediately, the king told his ministers that he would be assuming all responsibilities for ruling the kingdom. This was a declaration that has never existed since the reign of Henry IV. It could not be overemphasized that King Louis's behavior was not in line with the traditions of the French, and this was because his entire position on the concept of dictatorship considered it a right from God. Interestingly, as an act of his genuine faith, Louis XIV remarked himself as a representative of God and that any iota of rebellion or disobedience is sinful. From this conviction, he had the feeling of not being fallible and yet considerable quietness laced with moderation. The king, based on his perspective of divine election, chose the sun as his symbol which conferred the appellation the sun king on him. He believed that the sun was the symbol of Apollo, the god of peace and arts that gives life to things with no failure. His ministerial team consisted of the finest of men like Jean-Baptiste Colbert, Hugh de Lyon, and Marquis de Louvois, among whom he instigated disagreement. For the next 54 years, Louis would devote himself to his duty for eight hours every single day. No wonder he kept to the tiniest of details. 
He desired to control everything from ethics in court to the movement of his troops and from the construction of roads to theological disputes. This succeeded because he was tirelessly faithful to the course and reflected the mood of France which was overflowing with youthfulness, vigor, and excellence. Despite his use of pensions and punishments on the nobles, the monarchy has not been able to bring the nobles to subjection who within 40 years instigated 11 civil wars. However, being a cunning and witty king, Louis XIV lured them to his court, wrecked them through gambling, and made sure that they were dissipated. This would mean from that time forward that their livelihood and their destinies would be greatly dependent on their capacity to please the king. Etiquette became a tool of governance, and from that time, the nobles ceased to be respected as a part of French politics. There was a downside to this. The nation was weakened. One of the factors that helped Louis in his administration was that he had a handful of men who were experts in their crafts. He was very much intelligent, and he engaged them well. Some of the experts were writers like Molière and Jean Racine, whom he protected and ordered to sing his praises. The perceptions of art shown by the artists were not theirs but that of Louis, as Louis XIV imposed his concepts of beauty and nature on artists. The appearance and the way of life in France changed drastically, while the top towns experienced a rapid transformation as there were monuments erected everywhere and the familiar landscapes altered. The king was bent on building new places of residence. Interestingly, the remains of his extravagant palaces in Saint-Germain and Marly still stand. Even Versailles being highly extravagant during construction still stands and receives the pointed fingers of historians as the reason for the nation's ruins. In today's value, the worth of Versailles is the equivalent of the price of a modern-day airport, an object of global admiration and inspiration of French prestige. All the powers of the French government were directed to the construction of Versailles. This investment was an attempt by King Louis XIV to separate himself from the unhealthy residents in Paris. And he was right. Where the king faulted was that he erred in breaking the long-time traditions of his ancestors. The king had become very distant from the people, and the tenets of his leadership became vague. However, still focused on the construction of Versailles, the king had contracted the development of the French economy to Colbert, who supervised the construction work. His goal was to make France a self-sufficient economy by amplifying exports, manufacturing, and other necessary factors required to foster a fast-growing economy. Following this, King Louis XIV invaded the Spanish and Netherlands in 1667 in a mission he regarded as reclaiming his wife's inheritance. This led to a series of wars that spanned a major portion of his reign. However, in 1668, the king had to retreat after a very successful campaign due to pressures from the English and the Dutch. After this, he held the Dutch in mind, never forgiving them, but rallied with his cousin Charles II of England to invade the Netherlands in 1672. This war lasted for six years and finally ended in 1678 with the First Treaty of Nijmegen and King Louis XIV being triumphant. The Sun King was at his apex and had defeated the strong coalition of Spain and the Holy Roman Emperor, both of whom had joined the Dutch to fight against him. He extended the boundaries of France in the north by adding regions like the Flanders, and in the east by adding Lorraine and Franche Comté. His possessions became overwhelming and his fleet measured up with those of England and Holland. Perhaps the reason why Paris called him great and was an object of irresistible admiration in his court. At 40, the king could be observed as surpassing his counterparts. In all of this, serious changes were happening in his private life, and this included the change of mistresses, from Madame de la Valliere to Marquis de Montespan. However, Madame de Montespan was implicated in an affair known as the Affairs of the Poisons, which was a scandal where many prominent persons were accused of murder and sorcery. For fear of destroying his reputation, the king dismissed Madame de Montespan and made sure his entourage observed piety. Though there was still gambling and entertainment in the background, the court was overtly silent and hypocrisy became the order of his rule. On the flip side, the new mistress of the king, Madame de Maintenon, made pleasure a thing for the king again. The queen died and the Sun King secretly married his new mistress and she gained political influence that even at 70 she was still potent to exercise her duties. It was in the same period in 1692 that the seat of government was transferred to Versailles. There was a Turkish invasion that caused the leadership of France on a global scale to crumble, especially with the alliance of the Turkish government with the New England leader William of Orange. 
the Emperor, England, and the Dutch united forces to stop the expansionism of Louis XIV. His father-in-law, the King of Spain, died in 1700 and bequeathed his wealth to Louis's grandson. Louis, who desired nothing but peace, was left with no option but to accept the inheritance. And this came with a lot of criticism. In the War of the Spanish Expansion, there was a revolt against the French instigated by William de Orange. This war was so tough that it led to the French losing all the powers and advantages they had incurred for a long time. This was grievous for Louis who lost his son and his grandsons who had been in his consolation in recent years. Though the French lost their leadership advantage, their territory was preserved. King Louis XIV died four days before his 77th birthday in 1715. He was succeeded by the son whom his mistress bore to him, Duke Dumaine, while retaining power even after he died in a willful nullifying revolution against monarchy.